Hello and welcome to this edition of Saturday Chat. Big Scott 35. Um, we'll talk about the week there was, what it is, and what it will be. Uh, so this past week on my channel, Sunday night, great show with Bobbles. Um, Bobbles, you know, explaining how he's changing up a little bit. Um, not out of out of the hobby at all. Uh, just doing other things and enjoying the hell out of it. Uh, talking about going to the national, his focus for that. Uh, I will be talking. If you notice in these nationals, I really don't talk much about my what I got going on. That will be the last one. My my special uh, where I let you know everything what I'm doing at the national and everything. So that's look something to look forward to. But back to the week that was, got to show my SGC on Wednesday, six for six, six dimes. I, 10 Bowman rookie cards, all 10s, SGC. Uh, so you got to, thank you, SGC. I know y'all grade as harsh as there is out there. You know, next time I'll try to do better and get a gold label. I've only ever had one gold label which I think is pretty good because I do not grade as much as some other people and they only have one or two maybe gold labels. And what do I mean by that? It's the Super 10. Um, so that's that's the one that's supposed to be close as perfection as possible. Uh, you don't see those. I've seen them less and less now in the last probably year or so. So they might even be moving away from that. I don't know. But... Uh, so I did that, and uh, man, I didn't do a Thursday, but man, did I do a lot of nerdy stuff this week, and I'll do that this Thursday. Uh, so I think this week, well, I'll talk about that in the week that's coming up. So uh, that that's Wednesday this week. Um, you know, watch videos. Um, you know, not a lot going on around the hobby. A lot of people talking about the national. A lot of people talking about why they're not going to the national or how expensive just going to the national is going to be, uh, which I agree. Um, and I just don't think people have as much in their budget as times past, and that's what the difference is. Uh, I can't speak for others, but I know that's my big thing. Because we got an Airbnb paying, I think, a little over $200 for a week. Um, I, I can't complain about that. Yes, we're staying a mile away from the center. Um, but we're either going to Uber or I'm going to drive. Because I'm driving out there. Um, and I'm more about that on a later show as well. Uh, I keep getting going into that. Uh, I want to talk about it so bad. Uh so we, we got that, um, you know, not much craziness going on in the hobby. You know, I, I really appreciate my cheap cards. I mean, because I haven't been doing nothing crazy. You know, I'm getting ready for the National. So I've been really enjoying getting, you know, cheaper cards. I did really well on eBay this week. You know, I, I go by the adage of, you know, offer them. You know, you might feel like it's low ball. But they might come back with a counter offer, or the worst they'll do is block you, and then you're not going to get the card. Um, anyway, because uh, there is still crazy, crazy people do not fix their card prices as often as they probably should, or they paid, they overpaid, or they paid with the what the going rate was at the time, and that's not the rate now. Uh, and they're trying to get their money back plus their whatever 10% or whatever they feel like they got to have. Uh, yeah, people are going to have to start realizing on well, some of these cards, you're just going to have to get what you get and move on, take that and reinvest it or pay your bills. Uh, you know, unless you got, unless you got the, you could, you could wait. If, if those people could sit there and wait for somebody, because I, I was uh, talking with one of my buddies last, uh, well, I'm recording this on Friday, going to a wedding on Saturday. So 
a lot of my friends are playing Diablo 4. I am not. I was just sitting in the Discord chatting with them. And uh, one of the guys was telling me how crazy a price uh, a card was. And I was like, well, somebody might buy it at that price. There's people that either don't know, they think that's the price because that's what somebody listed it as, uh, or the person is very delusional and they'll sit there and just watch it. And I've done it. I've waited two, three years for cards. Uh, I still have stuff on my watch list. I have one card on my watch list that I'm always like, next paycheck, next pay. But now I got the national and I'm just waiting. And I'm hoping that guy, I, I think he's not, He he's really, really likes that card. And he's going to, He's, he doesn't have, you know, you hear people say, I don't have a problem listen, over putting it too high. If somebody wants to pay for it, let them, because I, you know, I don't mind keeping this in my, in my PC. Uh, I don't really understand that because if that's a card you want to keep in your PC, just keep it in your PC. But I also understand, like, you're willing to hang on to this and get the most out of it you possibly can. I see both sides of it. But as a collector in me, uh, which I'm going to get to here in a minute, um, yeah. So I have been reorganizing binders this week since I'm on my like sixth or seventh week out of work. Probably be my last week next week out of work. Uh, so I've been really going through and, and taking cards. I, I don't need all the cards, right? I don't need every – I'm sitting here looking at Max Scherzer. I'm not a Max Scherzer fan. He's just on the Mets. Uh, I was when he was with the Nationals because I thought, you know, but I've come to find out he's kind of an asshole. And I don't like some of the things he does. I don't like the way he acts sometimes. I'm not a, I've, I've never been a huge Max Scherzer fan. I was just liking he brought a championship to the Nationals. Uh, it was fun. But I'm not a Max Scherzer fan. So why do I have a 1,000, well, probably 500 Max Scherzer cards? No reason. Let's get rid of them. You know, um, same thing. Ryan Sandberg, I have his rookie. You know, I have a Max Scherzer rookie. That's the cards I'm looking for. Let me have one example of these players I like that are historical. Like Ryan Sandberg, another great example. Grew up watching him. Um, but he just doesn't do it for me as a Mike Schmidt does at this, or George Brett. Ryan Sandberg wasn't one of the guys that I was like, oh, I, Ozzie Smith is on. Um, he just didn't do that for me, so why am I collecting? And even with those other guys, I'm even thinking, why am I having, why am I collecting so many of those guys? I rather, If I want to collect, I want the rookie card and I want autographs. So I'm kind of, I, I think it, this has been another ongoing thing. I think the times are showing you can't spread your hobby money out to everywhere and you have to focus. And then while you're focusing, a guy like me, I have a wall, a literal wall of boxes in a spare bedroom that my poor parents had to sleep in <laughs> while, while they helped me with my shoulder the first week. Uh, my dad was here half a week. My mom was here the other half of the week. And, uh, but it's, of boxes of cards. Now, there's one rack that's all my PC and two other racks that are just cards that I'm more happy to get away with. And then I have a wall out here in my living room of binders. Barely, it's, you know, and I don't, the more I'm going through them, it's like, why, why do I have, and most of the time in my binder stuff, I don't go out of my way to buy those cards. Like, I did go out of my way to get a Scherzer rookie, a nicer one than I'm going to have. But I don't, if I open a pack and Scherzer's in there, I pull him out to put it in my body there. I, I really, you know, I'm not going to go as far as to say I'm only going to collect. Well, I will. I'm going to go as far as to say. I was going to say one guy. But y'all know I collect a handful of players in non-sports. And I'm going to. You know, and to do that, you know, yeah, I open the packs there. You know, we're opening up one pack a day. Um, you know, now I'm opening 
I'm actually opening up. I tell you what, this year's Prism Wrestling, really nice stuff. Uh, opened up one pack, really didn't hit anything. Uh, but they, they look, I mean, they look, look really, really nice. And they look well-centered uh, for the first four cards that I looked at. Um, so, you know, I, I just kind of, I'm just going to, yeah, I'll open up a pack a day. Do with it what I want. And I just got to figure out, I've been saying all along, what am I going to do? Am I going to go just one time to a show, set up and do 50 cent cards? I, I don't know. I I can tell you what, I am not going to sleeve every one of these like a lot of guys. I have all my numbered stuff and variants and variations and rookies, the big rookies sleeved up and some top loaded, whatever. But, you know, I, not all my Max Scherzers will be sleeved. And I just, um, that's why I'll just go 50 cents <laughs> and, you know, pull out some of the big boy cards. I, I could put every, I'm not stupid, but, um, well, I, my mama says I'm not stupid. So she's got to be right. Um, I, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I, I don't have a scanner. I don't have that for, like, I did sport lots. I don't mind doing sport lots again, but the problem with sport lots is, is it's the home of the 18 cent card. So you're you're tending to put some of your variants even at like a lower price to try to sell, undersell the other guys that got their cards on there. Um, I, I don't know. I, I might do that. That's what I've been organizing. And I've been putting them all in player. I just think they're easier to sell by player. I think because they get traded so much and everything. I do know a lot of teams play. I don't know if it's 50-50 or what. Uh, I'm a player collector. Um, you know, I, I don't collect every Met card that's out there. The only Met Mets that I'm collecting that's outside of the base card is uh, Pete Alonzo's um, that are current, Brett Beatty, uh, Alvarez, Ventos, and Mar Mariano, Marciano, whatever his name is, that's still on the minors. And I don't really go crazy over those. Beatty, I kind of have been, but Alvarez, if you haven't got your Alvarez cards, you might have, that ship might be selling, sailing real, really quick uh, for the Mets, just to let you know. Um, he's a beast. I think Tom, Tom, Thomas Nito is finally going to be the odd man out. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like I have to do something. Um, if not, I'm going to be buried in an avalanche of baseball cards. And I don't, you know, and if I do hang on to them, I, I've hung on to them for, since 1974. I, you know, I used to walk around my little lunchbox that's sitting right back one of them sitting right back here that used to have all my cards in them you know and then i graduated to the shoe boxes and and, and so it in the regular four four rows and stuff like that um and i got i remember getting my first i actually still have it my first book that came in a and toys r us they had it in a box with cellophane had a book had cards in it and, and your starting um, sheets. Um, I remember getting that. Uh, had baseball on it, and pictures, and it had rods instead of rings. It had rods, which I hated uh, after, because once you kind of put the sheets in, you didn't want to move the sheets anymore. And uh, so the more I collected, I was like, why did he even, what, who? Who thought this was a good concept? I don't. I didn't understand that one at all. What the thinking was behind that, with the little metal rods, and that I might have to pull that out in a further show just so y'all can see that. I, I it's buried in a box somewhere, but because uh, I just don't have the room here to uh, had it out where I was in Iowa in my basement because I just thought it was cool, <laughs> um, but. And that was back in the 70s. And I mean, it, those were in the, even in the 80s. I think after that, they started going to the ring binders because they had that 
Toys R Us for a long time had that tops starter, you know, binder and had it in all the sports, even hockey, I believe. Uh, so I was, you know, I was thinking about that today. And, but, you know, it was all right to collect everything when you were younger and you can only get a pack of every other week or every week or in the summertime when you did odds and end jobs, cut grass. I worked at the ballpark uh, just doing odds and ends, you know, when I was working a concession stand, keeping books, uh, keeping the score uh, uh, boards or whatever I could do to make a quick $20, $25 a night. Some nights I got, you know, if I did a lot, I got 50 during the week. Uh, I, I remember the cash under the table and uh, working for, for the city. And if uh, nobody's still working there that was doing that for me back in the day, I, I think it was a lot of us in the neighborhood or kids that grew up. Or, some of my friends even got to work for the city uh, older as a legitimate jobs. Uh, I think mine was legitimate. It was just, you know, they might even kept count of it, but I was underage. Uh, don't get anybody in trouble. I should stop talking, I guess. But anyway, you know, just doing stuff like that. I think all of us did that. I'd, I'd get cards. I would get, uh, you know, video games, comic books, Whatever, you know, I, I was collecting or wanted at the time. Uh, and then when I got into, I'm a little bit older, I got into music. And when I was driving, when I got to be driving, had a real job working at a grocery store, actually making good money. Um, and I had tapes on tapes, tapes. And then I had a wall of CDs at my house. Um, I love music, still do to this day. Um but, you know, it, it's just the hobby dollars even then. Then I, I, I strayed from cards, but I was still picking them up. I just uh, was doing with my 20s, man. You know, I, that weekend, Friday night, you get a handle and, and a 12-pack. And Saturday night, you get another 12-er and you know, party with your friends and whatnot, man. You know, the money kind of by Monday, you know, paid on Friday, broke on Monday type of deal, paying for bills, whatever you had. Uh, so, some with the packs. Um, you know, I, I was known at 7 Eleven as the card guy. I'd, every time I'd come in, I, whatever, uh, I lived like a block away, my first house with my friends. So, I'd walk over and get a hot dog and, I think then, like 222, I can get a hot dog, chips, and a medium big gulp or something like that. And you can keep your cup and go in and refill it uh, for like a quarter or 50 cent or whatever at that day. Um, so that's what I would do. But I would just pick up a pack of cards at the, at the register. So I got to be known as the card guy. Are you the card guy? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, things like that. Uh, like I said, I didn't have, at that time we didn't have, I, you know, this was the nineties, early two thousands. We did not have a card shop. I still don't have a card shop in my town or in the area. I, I don't even know where the close, closest card shop. I live in central and raised in central Virginia where I'll be going. The closest one I went to when I, when I found one was in Virginia beach. I, they have shows around there now every once in a while. My actually in my Legion Hall in my town, they're having one next weekend or Father's Day weekend. I can't remember which weekend, but uh, so that they do have them, but it's just you know, I was in a, my own little bubble and didn't have the group that I have now, which I'm blessed for. I know I'm straying all over the place, but it just struck me. It seems like a lot of people are talking about downsizing their cards for whatever reason, uh, getting out from under, whatever their lingo is. Um, mine is just, uh, I don't need them all. They need to be in other places in room. I need, I have an apartment. Uh, I just want more room, more space to get the stuff that I really want. Um, and so maybe a little bit more money in my pocket to get the, items I really want. I hope I haven't babbled too much straight off my topics tend to do. Just 
I'm free thinking, free rolling this as I'm going. Should have made points, but um, there you have it. That's my thoughts for today. A little chat. Um, happy and uh, happy for my niece this weekend getting married. And let's see. So Sunday night, I'm very happy. And we're gonna be. I'm coming on an hour later. To give me an hour to get back. An hour extra to get back from Virginia. Um, it's about a three hour drive for me, if that, two and a half, three hours. Not bad drive. Right down 85. Um, I'll have Victor on at nine o'clock Eastern time instead of eight o'clock. I should have Mike on again. By then, it might be too dark for him to walk. Who knows? Maybe he can get his steps in before. Uh, <laughs> so we'll have, uh, have those guys on. I have a lot of questions for Victor. Then we'll get to the national. It's always great to have Victor on. And I don't think a lot of it has rookie. I just clarifications, like stuff I brought up last Saturday, things like that. I uh, love Victor. Uh, I love trying to embarrass him when he's on other channels about giving man hugs. Uh, I probably need to stop that. <laughs> uh, but he does give great man hugs. I'm not, yeah, hey, there's a such thing as a man hug. It's not, you know, like it intimate, you know, whatever hug. It's, hey, bro, it's a bro hug, whatever you want to call it. Um, but, man, he he's the best. And because uh, you can just feel the the, the the love of camaraderie from this guy and and, uh, and everything he does with everybody. I don't I don't think he, you know, he has people that he really doesn't like to talk to like we all do, but we probably wouldn't know it. <laughs> That this type of guy, I don't say he's two faced or anything like, but he has so many friends in his hobby that you don't know who he doesn't because he he loves and likes everybody. And uh, I guess I'm going on too much in gushing, but Victor's one of the first guys outside of Mike, the Mikes that I got to talk to in the hobby. It was probably Mike, oh, Mike Moynihan, Eric, Victor, uh, you know, and then Nats Man. Uh, so that's me and Victor. His, if you look at his units behind him in his videos, me and him kind of collabed on how to get those ducks. I had the same sort of setup that he watched in one of my videos and he made his 10 times better. And then I bit off of him to make mine better. <laughs> so you see some old videos. I was in Iowa. We have very common <laughs> background, but his looks so much cleaner nicer because that's how we got to talk it. Uh, Wednesday, I am going to be showing off some of the most beautiful cards I have in my in my collection that I just picked up. I bought them, I, again, from Mike I, I didn't realize how good some of these cards look. One of them really intrigued me. I really wanted it, uh, and I got it. I, I usually... I wait a half a, a half a step before anybody to see if anybody else wants it. Uh, like I said, I don't really have FOMO, but I saw this and I had I, I was first. I made sure I was first. If I knew he had it, I would I would have called him before him. But I, I don't like to do that either because it's not fair. Uh, but to him or to everybody else. But um, man, I couple of them. One, I'm, I think I take in to Chicago to get autographed. Uh, it's a 8 by 10 Can't wait to show that off. And then, you know, Thursday. I'll do a nerdy Thursday this week for sure. I think this is going to be my last week off. I'm not 100% sure. My shoulder's not 100%. It won't be for a while to get the strength back in it, but the doctor might send me back to work. I don't know. I don't know if I can grab things, pull things right now. We'll see. So that's the week there is, there was, and will be. I probably blabbered and chattered and got off topic in the middle there. I'm going to put it up, see what y'all think. Let me know down below how you're feeling in the hobby right now. I'm happy. I'm always happy about the hobby. You know, it gets discouraging when prices get so high that it kind of prices you out for a little bit or you have to find your lane, redefine what you're doing. Um, but, you know, I, I'm going to get more into where I think I'm going to take. I'm always watching me. I'm always evolving. 
um, as a human and as a hobbyist. So just stay tuned. Next week, you'll be different. So until next time, like, share, tell a friend. Please subscribe if you haven't. Again, another week of a few more subscribers. Welcome to the channel. Um, and I hope you like what you see. If not, let me know what you're uh what you would like to see in my channel if you're new, what I you know, what I talk about, any questions. Until next time, we'll see you.